Jane Taylor is a CPA, CGMA, and Marketing Director with DMLO CPAs and Vice Chair of our Speakers Committee. So invite Deline to the table here. Thanks, President Julie. Larry Horn is the Executive Director of Amplify Louisville. Amplify is cultivating an inclusive entrepreneurial ecosystem by galvanizing its active network to provide diverse programming and direct access to talent, customers, and capital in order to strengthen the area's innovation economy. Most recently, he was the director of startup ecosystem development for Louisville through Techstars. Larry has an MBA from the University of Louisville and is the co-founder of TNG Pharmaceuticals, Liberate Medical, Derby City Cut and Sew, and Roth River. Larry is inspired to help entrepreneurs and small businesses be successful, and he does this by participating as the board chair of Venture Connectors, board chair of Lemonade Day Louisville, advisory board member of Canopy, annual giving committee chair for the University of Louisville Alumni Association Board of Advisors, and countless coffee and bourbon meetings with fellow entrepreneurs. Larry lives in Louisville with his wife, Emma, and kidpreneurs, Miles and Ava. I've known Larry for years and had the pleasure of serving as a founding board member of Canopy with him. He's a vital part of our business community and we are so fortunate to have him here to speak today. Thanks, Larry. Perfect. Okay. I was like, I don't, can't unmute myself yet. Um, thank you for that, Deline. It's, uh, I appreciate you introducing me and i um, very, very proud and lucky that we serve on one board together, but we, we, we bump into each other in all the community events. So uh, thank you for that. Um, let me get my screen shared here. And as uh, Julie mentioned, um, I love to talk. Um, and uh, with that, let me make sure. Can you guys just see the one screen with Amplify and the and the five people on it? Nod your head, good. Because of the cheating screens on the other on the other side. Um, but uh, again, thank you for having me here. Um, I uh, I've had the opportunity and uh, privilege of coming to a couple Rotary meetings in my time. And as we we're saying, kind of before we got started, I uh, would love to increase that activity uh, in the near future. So um, thanks for having me here. I wish that I could see you, everyone in person. Um, these Zoom calls never quite do it for uh, small talks. I look forward to hugs and high fives really soon. So again, thanks for having me here. So we'll get started. Uh, again, Amplify Louisville. Um, I want to just kind of talk about like, who are we? You know, the thing I want you to take away from this is that we are founder focused and founder led. And that our specifics, our focus in the community is going to be for tech enabled, scalable startups, that are agnostic to industry. And the space that they're in is anywhere from, you know, it's in your garage, um, it's over uh, a cup of coffee, nap and sketch, all the way to a series A round. And series A is relative based on where you live in this country, but we talk about anything about one to $3 million for here locally. Um, and what we try to do for them, and, and kind of mention this, Deline mentioned this a little bit earlier in my, my uh, bio, which is our goal is to help them grow their business. And we do that in a variety of different ways. Now, in addition to that, we have a particular focus on supporting non-traditional entrepreneurs. And those including from traditionally marginalized communities, corporate innovators, veterans, and university researchers and technologists by dedicating resources to reduce the barriers such as childcare, transportation, and other means of access. Um, I think that is an important segment for us to focus on as the most important thing we do is open the top of the funnel of the amount of founders that we have in our community. So Deline did a great job. Thank you for that intro. Um, you know, one of the things I always like to talk about is kind of my path of how I got here, which is very non-traditional. Um, you know, currently, as Deline mentioned, I'm a four-time founder. Um, those companies have raised up to, I think, $7 million in different forms of capital, whether that's friends and family and fools sometimes, uh, convertible notes, uh, Series A equity financing for those businesses. 
And then um, I do try to involve myself in the community as much as possible, specifically around entrepreneurship and business, uh, kind of business development. You know, Lemonade Day, if many of you are familiar with this, this is how do we teach the use of our city um, about entrepreneurial mindset and skill. And the reason that's important to me is, you know, my non-traditional path started, um, you know, a long time ago. I was never the kid that sold lemonade. Um, I wasn't trading cards at, in elementary school to, uh, to gain dollars. You know, I was the first person in my family to go to college, and that was always a primary focus. And I remember um, my mother would take me downtown, and she would show me the Humana building and how beautiful it is and say, you know, if you do all the right things and you check all these right boxes, you may be fortunate enough to sit in one of these corner offices. Um, and, you know, growing up, I thought that was just like, that was the way to do it. Um, never was entrepreneurship a idea that was something that I was going to do. And quite frankly, it was kind of a bad word in my house. Um, you know, my dad used to joke, those are just for unemployed people. Uh, which, you know, now we, we have a different conversation about that. Uh, but going through the time, um, how I got here was, did all that, realized I didn't love the, the idea of the corner room, um, worked for a small manufacturing company here in town called Great Northern, um, had the opportunity to uh, go get my MBA from University of Louisville in the entrepreneurship program, which was a complete life changer. And that was the first time that I'd ever really seen the skills of myself and um, applied that to what entrepreneurship could look like. Um, and, you know, been blessed to start several companies. And through that, in our community, I've been a Vote Awards winner. Um, I went through the Accelerate Health um, uh, uh, Accelerator. And then also, you know, worked very closely with GLI and the previous Enterprise Corps. They helped me as an entrepreneur and as a founder build my company. So I've been very, ex I've been very lucky to um, have seen a lot of the different pieces of the entrepreneurship community. But how have we been doing as a community? Um, interestingly enough, in the last 18 months, we've had two separate organizations come in and do assessments of our ecosystem. And the first one was Techstars, which, you know, as Delene mentioned early on, I had actually worked for in the last year. Um, they came in early 2019, and then Tech Economy in partnership with GLI, um, I believe also in 2019. And it's interesting to read both the assessments and the report because a lot of it is, is overlapping. I mean, there's a lot of things that um, I always call the ugly sores of our community that we need to recognize and own so we can deal with them. Um, Techstars views the maturity of startup ecosystem in kind of three basic stages, and that's developing, emerging, or leading. And they do this across five themes, which is culture, density, talent, capital and institutional support. And where they put us was right around that kind of developing emerging piece. Um, and I think that the other piece they said, which was really interesting to me that really that has stuck with me as a founder and someone that believes in our community is this paragraph. I'm gonna read it directly. It's our overall assessment of the region is that there are fragmented silos of startup focused activity in various states of operation combined with a passionate group of community leaders and supporters who have, all, who have overall founder first approach to startups, but whose attitudes and behaviors will need to evolve in order for the Louisville ecosystem to reach the next stage of maturity. And, you know, I think about that a lot. I think about the silos of operation. And, you know, when we think about some of the overlapping piece from the Techonomy report as well was, how do we increase a coordinated collaborative community. And, and here's kind of one of their assessments from Techotomy from, uh, from GLI. The greater, the greater Louisville region needs a strong entrepreneurial support effort that can drive the regional entrepreneurial ecosystem. It appears that it is necessary to strengthen the organizational model by which entrepreneurial support services are to be delivered to ensure a systematic integrated system that is led and governed by collaborative minded entrepreneurs who can who can credibly approach private, corporate, foundation, government funding sources, and be accountable for the delivering measure, measurable results. So I don't typically like to read things directly when I give these talks, but I think those two, those two assessments are really powerful. And when you talk to people, most like, yeah, we, we kind of know this, but when you get that validated by a third party group, I think that really drives that point home. 
And the areas of focus for both of these groups have been the five that you see on the screen. We are in, we are in need of a culture change. There's a lot of work that needs to be done for founder development, for access to capital, ca uh, capital and customers. Um, and so let's talk about, you know, so understand that assessment, you know, we really do come from a real, a great foundation. I'm not starting from scratch in the work that I'm doing today. And to give you a little bit of evolution, probably over the last 15 or 20 years. And, and I've, as I got to see the people that were on this, uh, call, I'm gonna call it a call or at this meeting, you know, I've, I've known many of you for a long time. I've interacted with you in these variety of different ways, but, um, and a lot of this starts from state funding. So GLI Enterprise Core was partially funded by um, the Cabinet of Economic Development. Um, LEAP, and they operated for 15, 20 years and did some amazing work. And all the leaders of that organization supported me personally um, and professionally through the time that I worked with them. Uh, during the previous governor administration, there was a new call for entrepreneurial activity. And the organization that, was, um, that received that award was LEAP. And that organization was had a healthcare focus, um, where the partners of that were Louisville Healthcare CEO Council, the University of Louisville, and as well as Accelerate Health. Now, while we serviced all founders, you know there was this focus on entrepreneurship uh, on healthcare. And as we move into Amplify, what what we learned from Leap and the idea we've been talking about for months is that. Leap has this amazing ability to focus and lean into the healthcare entrepreneurship entire spectrum, especially as the partnership with Louisville Healthcare CEO Council. Um, so what they look at now is, is what does it look like to help a healthcare entrepreneur from you know napkin sketch to IPO or unicorn, as as Tammy York Day likes to say. Um, and from that, what we worked on was having Amplify be the recipient of state dollars and focused on what I mentioned to you just a moment ago, which are these, you know, tech enabled scalable startups, but agnostic to industry. So we have a rich growing ecosystem. Um, our goal, and you may hear me say this several times through this presentation is I want to lead partner or support with all the variety of programs and, and organizations that are in our community. Um, as you can see from this collection, and this is just a, you know, a piece of it, these are all the organizations that we have actively worked with or look to work with that are doing amazing things in our community to support founders. And again, what we wanna do is help be a convener and a collaborator with those variety of organizations. There's also just a bunch of cool stuff already happening. We have, we'll talk about capital, but access to capital is a critical uh, point for all startups in all regions in the country. You may hear that Louisville has less money than, you know, Austin or Boston or San Francisco. While some of this may be true, if you talk to one of those, comp those startups, there's also a lot more startups. Um, and so we do understand capital is a piece, but we have, we've accounted for $50 million of new money that can come into the community, as well as we've had some recent successes. Pet First Exit, the work that El Toro and APRIS is doing, Roadmap. Um, we also have a, a really great group of kind of budding uh, companies that have gained traction and continue to grow. You can see some of those there. And those founders, some of them identified with the Endeavor program, um, are giving back, which is such a critical point. And then, you know, if, uh, I think I mentioned before we started this talk, I'm a big Star Wars fan. Um, and so Baby Yoda here also helps us with uh, macro forces you know, capital off the coast, rise of the rest has been here twice, our silver tsunami, tsunami, data economy, and of course other buzzwords that, you know, people like me love to throw out. I think a really interesting thing during the pandemic to consider is that most of some of my startups, a lot of people that worked for me were remote. And a lot of these remote workers or workers in other parts of the country that are now at home on their computer versus an office are now available talent that we can hopefully get access to. So what are the ingredients for building a successful company, right? Uh, this is, you know, the one thing I wanted to show, and you may have all seen it, is like the path of a startup, and it's this crazy squiggly line. It's not linear, um, and it's definitely not easy. Um, I think the important part is everyone in the community has a role as a part of this, um, and you move to it. You know, the idea we we're, just, you know, we we're talking earlier, like not everyone has an idea, but when an idea is created, what are the steps take? Talent. 
you know, again, you need smart people around you. Um, you got, you know, get out of your cubicle and go and go to Louisville and help work. Uh, training. This is a big part. A lot of founders may be technical experts in what their product's about, but there's a lot of other parts to running a business that I'm sure most everyone on this call understands to make a business successful outside of just building a product. Connections. This is probably the one that's at my heart, at the deepest in my heart the most. Connectivity is such a big part of what's going to make this community continue to grow um, that it's, it's something I want to focus on quite a bit. Customers. You know, holy cow, they bought my thing. Sometimes that's just a surprise because you love your ugly baby so much sometimes. But when people start to buy it, you know, that's a critical thing for traction. And it leads into the next thing, which is growth. You know, receiving financing for your business, a lot of that and several of you on this call uh, may be the ones that do the investing. You know, they want to see that traction. They want to see those customers and they'd love to see it from their local community. And then lastly, you know, you go into that successful company and that successful founder. And what we hope to build is that once they get to that successful company, that they're willing to give back. And I think that cycle, if anything, we'd also make this a cycle, a circle of when those founders find that success and we hopefully help them through the entire process, that they're now willing to continue that. But this bottom thing I have is, is one of the parts of our community that I would really love to see change. And this is part of that culture piece, which is stop eating our young and stop complaining about each other. You know, this idea I hear in a lot of conversations about a deal that went south 12 years ago. Um, you know, if you're not talking about how you're helping companies be successful today, then we need to change that narrative for you. So let's dig in a little bit of what our priorities are as an organization. Um, you know, this is a big job and this is a lot of work. And as I mentioned before, this requires the entire community. But we kind of look at this as in several buckets, you know, talent, training, connections, customer growth, communication, which I'll dig into a little bit more. But there's this kind of this, these other pieces that have to be a part of all of this. Data and culture is something that underlines all of these pieces. Now, any of you that own your businesses, which I know there are a lot, you know that data is critical in making better decisions. It's going to help us. We're going to collect the data through surveys, CRMs, conversations. And what that's going to do is allow us to provide the right type of programming, the right type of connections and access that founders need. I think I mentioned we were talking earlier um, about meeting founders at their needs. You know, not just putting out programming that's blanket. How do we get super specific and data will help that? And then the culture piece is also critically important. You know, breaking down those silos, supporting each other, that's a big part. And then again, lead partner and support. Amplify is unable to do all of these things alone, nor should it. There are a lot of opportunities for us to partner and support existing organizations that are already doing amazing work. But maybe what they need is a little bit of bandwidth, a little bit of thought leadership. Maybe it'll sprinkle a little bit of dollars in there if we can to help supercharge what they're doing. So let's be collaborative and coordinated. And then where there are gaps in the community and there are programs or services that are needed that aren't currently provided, this is where Amplify can really come into play and create net new things by either leaning into the community and asking how we should do it or looking at national models of what's supportive and what, what works. So let's talk about how this works. Um, let's dig in a little bit. So key achievements in year one, you know, the most important thing is that we find common ground and we help founders get a greater impact. You know, these things here are things that I really believe that we should focus on for year one at a very high level to help entrepreneurs and founders. A clear and accessible, easily accessible ecosystem map and resource locator. I often say, how do I get a founder to get to the person they need to talk to or the resource they need five coffees earlier than it takes them currently? A first customer initiative, which I've been working closely with GLI on, which is, we'll talk a little more of the customer stuff, but customers, pilot partners are critical parts of, our, um, of growing the ecosystem. An active angel group. We currently don't, do not have one in Louisville. We did in years past. There are some that surround us, but none in Louisville. And again, to kind of go back to increase coordination and collaboration between our different ESO groups and other programs in our community that are helping small businesses. And then a last piece, which is local, regional, national media coverage. Like we have to do a better job of storytelling as a community. 
I think there are so many great wins. We alluded to some of them earlier that when I talk to friends from, you know, Boulder or even Des Moines, they just have never heard of startups in our community, in our, in our area. So how do we help promote that message? And, you know, there's some obstacles to doing these things. A, as a community, we just have to get out of our own way. Um, we have to lean into some of our natural assets. You know, GF, GLI has identified them as the clusters that they're working on. I know they're talking about that. And again, it's getting return on investment capital. So to dig in a little bit, um, you know, talent. And I'll go a little quicker. I know I'm running out of time here. Um, but talent, you know, one of the things is unlocking, I always say unplugging people from the matrix. Um, not only do we support current founders, by helping them with the variety of programming that you see here, but how do we help those founders that are just kind of scratching or putting their toe in the water and they're trying to figure out, is this right for me? Where do we send them so they, they get to a place where they're comfortable and we can help them articulate and de-risk their ideas? Um, you can see below these partners, some of these, we, some of these uh, organizations we've worked directly with and several of them we continue to hope to work or work with in the future. Founder training. You know, this is the part of running the business. You know, we talk a lot about in the community, like we help, we do a really good job helping companies pitch and get ready for investment, or we help them build a business plan. But some of the parts that we could do a better job of, and I know there's these partners do some of this, which is how do we help them with finance and marketing and sales? How do we help them get through the stall of their business when there's money in the bank, they've got some customers, but they're not growing at the pace they want to be or should be. Let's help them there because a lot of our startups in our community die on the vine at that point. Connections, again, going back, you know, we want to facilitate mentorship connections. And, I, and this group is a great group to talk to about this because there are so many amazing business leaders in this group. We need to connect you to startups. Even if, you know, your company wasn't a startup when you, when you joined it, you have such valuable business information. Um, in this graphic, you kind of see some of the places that we currently send entrepreneurs to to get advice and counsel. There's also different types of mentorship. There is kind of that seasoned, I've been doing this for 30 years mentor, but then there's also the near peer, which is the individual that did this two or three years ago and has very specific knowledge about what that founder is going through. Amplify needs the help and the community needs the help making sure we make those connections fast and efficient. What you'll see in the bar at the bottom is a website that we've created, um, which is louisvillestartupmentors.com. If you're listening to me right now and this is something that you're interested in, please go to this website, sign up. This gives you direct access to the entrepreneurs and the founders that are looking for mentors, and they're looking for mentors in a wide variety of skill sets. We talked about customers. Um, again, first customer initiatives. You know, we are, I think I said this before, a customer is the best source of income um, and feedback. So one of the things we're working with, again, working with GLI of how do we create first partner initiatives. But here's some other things that we're doing. Startup weekend, how do we come into a company and do a startup weekend where we hack on their data and we help them find innovative solutions that maybe one of those entrepreneurs in the room can start. Um, so that's hackathon. There's also reverse pitches. Two examples of this are both Founder Hunt and Care Tech. Founder Hunt was put on by the University of Louisville, Care Tech by Louisville Healthcare CEO Council, which were problems that the companies had pitched out to entrepreneurs that might be able to solve them. So these are ways that corporations in our community can support entrepreneurs or you know, actually help themselves as well. But most importantly, help, help run a pilot program, help do mentorship, you know, maybe look at that as a potential option. Uh, one of the things I talked about earlier was we have a lot of co companies in Louisville that are buying very similar products from startups not here where they could do that locally. Now, maybe, and I think part of that is how do we can make that connection better? Growth, capital, you know, if any of you have kids of a certain age, let's take a trip on our favorite rocket ship. Um, we need to infuse more capital into the community, unlock more angel investors. Uh, look at non-traditional finance sources such as revenue-based financing. Um, we are working with several partners. You can see this list, and this is not a complete list by any means. But um, one of the things, again, as I mentioned, we'd love to unplug an angel group and get them active and located in Louisville, where they can source the. Uh, we can have those deals source and vet it before they get to the angels. Critically important, and that's the fuel for those startups to hire that talent that they're desperately looking for. Storytelling. 
Um, again, we have to do a better job as a community of storytelling and that's cheerleading and that, but that's also articles and papers that is blogs. That is all those things of uh, talking about what's happening in our community. I think we have a lot to be proud about and we have a lot to be excited about. And I think all of us have a responsibility to promote that piece. Data, again, relentlessly track and learn from data, the things I mentioned before, this is gonna help us provide better resources and information for our founders. Okay, so that's the work we have to do. And I know I'm running out of time, Julie, I'm sorry, but let's talk about the board because I think this is a critical part of our, of our organization is that we're, I am surrounding myself with thought leaders from a variety of different places in our community. You know, I don't want to read those all off to you, but very lucky to have um, these, or, these folks. And those who know Ben Reno Weber, he is happy that I put that picture there. He loves that picture. Um, but you see these folks here, Ben, Sarah, Angelique, Sharon, Steve. Um, again, Jose, Grace, Wendy Lee, who's a national figure who also helped run Centerfuse up in Cincinnati, and Stacey Grigg. So combination of community supporters that represent chamber, city, um, also tech founders and entrepreneurs and investors. So critical thing to have around us as we're looking to build out this organization. So final thoughts. Again, if I can leave you with anything, Amplify is a founder-focused, founder-led evolution of a bunch of really hard work by a lot of smart and talented people. You know, two, we exist to connect potential founders to all the resources and all the things that we talked about today. If you have someone that fits that bucket, please send them our way. And lastly, and most importantly, we need you. We need your help and support. And if you're sitting there going, well, how, Larry, do we help you? Well, I'll tell you, uh, be a mentor. Um, again, that is one of the, the, the least expensive things that you can ever do as someone that's been through your own process is spend time, again, coffee, bourbon, whatever, a glass of water, and set with that founder and entrepreneur and help them figure out their business model. Be a customer or user. So Rafi is a guest today. Rafi has a tremendous tech platform that you should take a look at and be one of his, be one of his customers. Support the, the companies in the community. And lastly is get involved. Now this is an easier thing in the past when we were doing hugs and high fives at meetings, like I'd say come and just be a part of the, part of the energy. But now get involved is, if you are interested, reach out to me, let me connect you, let's see how we can work together, how we can maybe do some work with your company, have you as a mentor, et cetera. So to finish, please contact me, reach out to Amplify. You can go to our website, amplifylouisville.com. It has links to all our different social media parts. That's my email address. Please feel free to reach out to me directly. I'd love to have a conversation. As we said kind of earlier, like I think we need more conversations. We need more of the work around, let's just sit down as, as citizens of our community and figure out how we can help this because what we know from data is that a thriving entrepreneurial ecosystem is rising tide raises all ships. The, the data supports that'll help your businesses and our entire community if we do have founders that are successful. So. Thank you very much. I'm sorry it went over time. A lot to cover. I wish I could cover more of it, but thank you for the time. Uh, Larry, you didn't go over it all. We were oh. very inspired and, um, you know, just the energy and just really the positivity that you bring and the information for how we can engage with this. So I know um, this has been wonderful for us and we'll start some questions and maybe we can continue sure. on with the conversation. Uh, you've had several during your talk. So we'll start okay. with Jean West's question. Uh, she says, talk about the silver tsunami. What experience have you had in this area and advice would you give? Sure. I think when we reference that, right, it's the, it's, the, um, it's the growing, the aging population. And what's really interesting is the work that Louisville Healthcare CEO Council is, is squarely focused on how do we solve these problems. What I'm referring to for us, too, is we talk to founders and we're thinking about their value proposition and the products that they offer, is they should consider this growing consumer base mm -hmm. and how they can um, build products and solutions to, to help them as they go. If you're familiar with the Thrive Center downtown, I mean, that is a playground that is focused on aging, our aging population, and how we can keep them engaged, we can keep them active, and by leveraging and using technology. 
You know, the state had um, identified certain areas that they felt like there was a lot of opportunity um, under the last administration. Of course, we've been in this crazy time. This pandemic has um, kind of soured things for a little bit. But do you think those uh, same areas like distribution and health care and so forth, are those still the prime areas for the Louisville region? Or do you see some new ones um, with the change? Sure. Um, you know, I think anytime you can lean into what you're really good at as a city is really is smart on behalf of building a business here. You know, I'm not one of these people that say every startup should build their business in Louisville because there's depending on what they're doing, we might not be the best place for them. And that that's sacrilegious to some folks, but I think that's the kind of conversations we need to start having is stop making our entrepreneurs afraid to move. Mm -hmm. um, because the good news is I always say let's buy them a ticket and when they're successful, hopefully they come back and give back to the community. But to your question, I think when we look at this, you know, this is a part of unplugging those non-traditional entrepreneurs, right? So we have some amazing corporations in our city. And there are some people sitting in that corner office, that cube that might have been like me that really don't want to, they have crazy brained ideas. And so let's, and they're coming from these clusters that we have, let's unplug them and help them build companies and then have the support and mentorship and potentially first customer opportunities with the strong cluster and companies that we have in our city. Really good. Okay, this is from Kevin Lynch. In the assessment, Man. did they elaborate on what they meant by needing attitude and behavior change in the leadership? He says he's not surprised to hear it, but I think we're making progress, thanks. Sure, Kevin, great question. You know, you and I have probably actually had this conversation. I think they were alluding to is, you know, I think what we have in Louisville, again, going to siloed, and what I've experienced personally, and this is my opinion, is there's a lot of folks that hold on tight to the thing that's theirs. Mm -hmm. um, and there's not enough mentality that one plus one can equal three in this community. And we can synergize and supercharge each other instead of going, don't take my cheese, because if you take it, I'm going to have less of it. Well, the truth of it is, if I take it and then I have some, more people are going to bring cheese and we're going to have so much cheese, we're going to be happy. Um, and so I think, Kevin, going back to that comment specifically and attitude changes is that, you know, what was consistent in both assessments was the lack of coordination and collaboration between organizations and groups within our community. And I think that is that old, and not, you know, this isn't everybody, right? This isn't, you know, uh, two sides only. There's a lot of amazing groups and organizations that are wonderfully collaborative. But I think that's what they were coming from with that, that point. This kind of ties into it. Um, you mentioned culture change. What needs to change? Sure. Uh, I mean, I've been working on this even when I was with Techstars back last fall. You know, there's, it, this is a long list. Um, and I think that I start with connectivity and social capital. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we build trust and connections between founders, between founders and investors, between investors and investors, corporates and investors, all the pieces of the pie? with increased social capital that reduces reduces the friction of doing work together and that work might be i'm now going to be your coo or i'd like to invest in your company or you know yes your product's interesting i think i could figure out a way to do a pilot trial inside my organization so when we think about the culture piece a lot of it just starts with don't look at Larry as the executive director of amplify as the one way for you to get connected to anybody on this call Right. I need to make sure that Gene and Barry are in a room enough together that they know each other and they're doing things. And they tell me three months later, Did you know that me and Barry built this great product together. Awesome. We met at open coffee three months ago. So that's the type of culture change I start with, which is the connectivity and social capital piece, because there's a lack of trust. Um, and there's also a lack of trust between those different pieces. And, um, you know, Increased social capital, again, reduces that friction. And I think let's all get, let's get together and let's do work together. Wonderful. So how do you see Canopy fitting into this ecosystem? <clears throat> and you might want to share a little bit about what Canopy is so everyone has a good frame. Was that a, was that a Deline? Deline, did you, did you plant that? <laughs> no, this is from nope, Tom, didn't. Thomas Williams to everyone. Oh, so. uh, well, that's no surprise. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. Thank you for that question, Dom. I mean, interesting enough, um, I was on Canopy Cafe, which is a little 30-minute talk they do uh, twice a week this morning. And we, we talked about this specifically as it relates to entrepreneurship, right? So Canopy, for those who don't know, it's, it's how do you, it's just doing good business. 
it's taking care of your employees, it's taking care of your community, it's taking care of the, um, the ecosystem. Um, if you're familiar with the B Corp model, that has been a very popular model out of the West Coast, Canopy is the localized version for the state of Kentucky to focus on things that we care about as citizens of this state. Um, and it is, a, it is a certification that says, if you meet this certain criteria, which is important to us as, as common people of the Commonwealth, then you'll get this certification and that communicates to your consumer, we care about these things. Again, that is clean supply chains, uh, fair wages, you can name a bunch uh, for those. So I know that was more of a canopy plug than I should have done there, sorry. But how does canopy fit in? Well, let's talk about it specifically from the startup community. So we're blessed in the startup community because people are just building their models from scratch. And I often talk, sit across from a founder and say, you should bake in these things that, into the DNA of your business day one. You know, we all can say that, um, we can all say that, oh, we can all say that um, happy employees make you more money, right? There's a service profit chain. I, you know, as a, as a business, you know, two degrees from business school, I got pounded in my head that shareholder value is the only thing that you should care about as a leader of an organization. Well, I won't cuss right now, but you know what I feel like saying about that. I think that um, we have a responsibility to our community to take care of those people that work for us and take care of those people around us in our community. And we can help with the startup pieces. Think about that now. When you're building out your supply chain, try to make it as clean, you know, quote unquote, clean as possible. When you think about how you're building your employee handbook and you're thinking about the benefits and things that you're offering, you know, don't try to make, I often say this, like move, move that line off the income statement and move it to the balance sheet. Those people are assets. Um, so anyways, I think that's how Canopy can fit into the work that we do. And that is by me, you know, me and those around me having conversations with founders as, they're, as we're helping them bake out their business model. Don't forget about that, the importance of that. Really great. Well, Larry, thank you for an inspiring an informative presentation and um, we look forward to he hearing and seeing you soon again and hopefully a member of Rotary one day but regardless of um, our relationship please know that we support your work and Thank just you. really proud of it and um, keep us in mind too and in, in ways that we can stay informed and current I think you, you gave us a lot of things to think about today so it's Thank very you. good very good well Julie thank you very much for having me and again please anyone feel free to reach out to me if you'd like to have a conversation Great, thank you. <clears throat> so um, everyone, don't forget to register and invite a guest for one of the upcoming Business Synergy events and make sure your information is current and up to date um, for our um, directory that we lived through the whole year reflecting back. But I've noticed there's several um, emails and some phone numbers that have changed. So will you please go in and check it yourself with DACDB or get in touch with Alyssa and make sure if you look at your directory, make sure that that number is, is current. That, that'd be a huge help because we want to get the directory printed as soon as possible. For those that are interested in the learning more about Rotary through What is Rotary, we're going to be having a session immediately following this meeting, so stay on the line, and it won't take a whole lot of time, but we really encourage you to stay with us. And um, if there's no other business that comes before the group today, we just want to say thank you for being here, and thank you again, Larry, for, for your presentation, and, and thanks to all for being a part of Rotary. With that, we're adjourned.